there guys and welcome to a new tutorial here. This is Gary here at GenVFX and today we're back to the modifiers. We're going to go through them, as we said, we're going to go through them one by one and that was the idea. Been a bit sidetracked every now and again, we're doing a quick tutorial. But this one is a nice quick one. Today we're going to talk about the screw modifier, which is interesting because it's the kind of it's one of those things that everyone is when they open up Maya and they haven't used it before they kind of think how do I how do I do a revolve you know or how do I do some sort of like lathe everyone has different ways of putting this thing by name but in Blender it's called the screw modifier so it's really really useful and um, obviously it, it actually it actually lives up to its name uh, very very well I'm going to delete the default cube, I know, sacrilege, and let's move in a little bit here. So let's just get in a little bit, and I am going to let go to the side view. I'm going to press 3 to go to the side view. In fact, no, I'll go for S1 to go to the front view. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and I'm going to look. You can probably see my subdivisions here across there. That is one meter, because I kind of like to keep it to the default setups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer to here and say I wanted to create a donut. Well, I can do that. I go add mesh, I'm going to add a circle and as you can see that's absolutely massive and down the wrong axis. So put it down the correct axis and we're going to scale the radius whoops, down. I'm going to put a finger on shift, I'm going to drag it nice and slowly. Put Make that point 05 for the radius. And uh, Let's set the vertices to 20. For the sake of argument, that's about right. And let's just pull back a bit here and let's just do this so we can have a look. And let's press dot to frame it. And there you go. There it is. There is a little circle. Now, if I want to make a donut, you use the screw modifier. And very quickly, if I just add the screw modifier to this, what the idea of the screw modifier is, it will actually take the profile of your object and revolve it around. And the defaults here are the angle is 360, the screw height we'll come back to, uh, iterations, I'll come back to, but that's the number of times it does its rotation, the axes, which in this instance, instance is X, Y, and Z, obviously, because they're the only three that they have. And then we've got steps in the viewport, steps in the render view, merge, and stretch UVs. Now, and also interesting things to do with polygon normals, which I'll also mention later. But let's try and do this nice and sharpish. So at the moment, as you can see, it's doing something. You can actually kind of see what's going on. It is, in fact, doing a revolve, but it's doing a revolve around the z-axis. And as you're probably aware, the z-axis is the one that goes up and down. So it's saying, I really want to run it in that axial area. But you don't. You want to actually run it in either X or Y. In this case, we run it in X. So let's go back to the edit, go get edit mode. I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to press this, and I'm going to push this up. And the moment you do that in edit mode, what you're doing is you're moving your vertices away from the center point of your object, because that's the point that you're actually going to revolve around unless you have an object in the axis object. For example, if I go back and put that back in the middle, and I come in, go into object mode, and I'm going to add a, an empty, a plain axial empty, if I then move, if I set this, let's just do this this way first. I'm going to set the axis object to the empty. I'm going to pick the empty and then I pull the empty up. And we have the same effect, but it keeps that pretty much around the origin. Whereas, you know, but at the end of the day, if you're doing something like this, you probably want the center of mass of this object not to be at the bottom where the origin point is, but actually probably where your empty is. So it's normally better if you're building something particular, sort of like this sort of thing. I don't necessarily think it's worthwhile doing it with the empty. I personally think you just go back to your object and mess around with it that way in the edit mode. So if I go back to edit mode, select all of those, make sure I've selected them, and push those up. There you go. That is now rotating around the x-axis. And you can see, if you look up here, there it is, around the x-axis. So if I change this to the y-axis, it just puts it back up here because it's not... <laughs> offset in the correct axis. So you see what I mean? So you have it in the x-axis, it just it does it over the x-axis. When you have it in the z-axis, it does it around the z-axis. Obviously that's not correct. So let's put this back where it should be. If I just dum 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 dum, let's just select all those points again. I'm going to move this back up. So there you go. So that's now rotating that shape around the x-axis, which is great. 
So what I'm going to do very quickly is bring this down to here. So it's kind of there. I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis. So that is the reason why that's um, not doing it correctly, by the way, I've just realized, is because when I built my circle, I, hey, watch this. If I press N, you'll notice that the rotation is set to 90 degrees. And that's because when you do your edits down here, when you're building something, it doesn't reset it to zero. It just does it as it is. It puts those values up here. In order to get this correct, I need to go here, object, and go apply. And I'm going to put rotation and scale. And then immediately now you'll see that this is now wrong because it's now trying to rotate it around the y-axis, which it shouldn't be. It should be around the x-axis or the z-axis because the z-axis is the one that's up and down, as you can see. Uh, z up in Blender. Z up in Blender. And if anyone says it's only in Blender, it's not. There's other software you can have z up. And also you can reset your axis to be z up in pretty much everything if you look hard enough. So here's our little donut -y thing, all very nice. And if I just stick on the wireframe, you can see we have uh, 16 in the subdivision steps. So I can obviously take this up or down. So let's say I'm going to set that not to 103. That's ridiculous. But let's set it to 32, less ridiculous. And I'll set the render steps to 64. So you can see on that, in fact, if I take this down, I mean, it is, it's, it's self-explanatory. I set that to 16, but when I render it, if I just press F12, and now you can see, there you go, you see it's rendered it with 64 subdivisions, so it's a lot smoother. And again, you know, if, if you need to do this, fine. I think sometimes you obviously have to when you've got very, 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 very heavily dense stuff. But for something like this, this smaller, what I'm going to potentially use it for. At the moment, if we go to the front view, you can see that this is, it's actually 0.5 in each direction. So it is essentially one meter high. And we're going to use that in terms of, it's one meter diameter on the circle, if you think about it that way. And we're going to need that for the next part. So you can generally make your donut shapes, something like that, that's fine. Or even if you wanted to say do, in fact, I'll do that as well in a second. Um, no, do you know what, let's do it now. The other main reason why people want to use a screw tool is because they want to create things that they, they do that whole sort of revolve thing that you get in other pieces of software. So let's add in a, a, a mesh. I'm going to add a single vert, I'm going to add a single vert, and there it goes into the center. I'm going to move it up to about there. I'm going to extrude it out to here and then to here and then I'm going to go up to here and then to here and then here and then here and then back down to about there and to there and then back again to there. Now I could have used um, the lock, the snap to lock it onto the vertices but yeah whatever. So there you go. So if you've got a shape like this, it's an edit mode object, and you then stick on the screw modifier, you start to get bottles and things like that. So you know, and then it's like, well, that's fine. Um, I want to go and do some more stuff to this, this uh, shape. I want to add. Let me just say, I want to add. I want to subdivide these vertices. I think that vertice, and I should be able to uh, bevel the vertice, and by doing that, I get more points, and then I can decide exactly how many of those I want. And then I can do the same with this one. I can then uh, go to the vertex and bevel the vertex. And there you see. So you, you you can you can reiterate to your heart's content. It's quite handy. Just take the two vertices there and then go uh, subdivide on the edge and you get a new one. And we go, let's just do that. Oops, I just deselected. I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to uh, subdivide again. And I'm going to subdivide again. So you've got that sort of complete control to be able to um, model, you know, different uh, different types of the say, you know, different uh, versions essentially of an object. You can just say, right, well, I've got this this version here, this iteration maybe, and then you have to do a duplicate, and you just say, on oh, this one, I wanted to go in, or you can just you know mess around with all sorts of things. So you can create tires and whatnot by just manipulating vertices and getting that kind of shape that you want on that edge. So it's very useful for stuff like that. But let's just go back. Let's just take this back, back to our donut. Our little donut. Hopefully there'll be enough undos. Yeah, there we go. And as I was saying, this is one unit high. So let me go to edit mode. I'm just going to select this and go all. Oh. I'm going to push this up so it starts at zero. 
pretty much on this little, little zero edge and then there we go now it's not called screw for any stupid reason other than the fact that it also does uh, a screw shape so if I push that up 0.1 because that is inside of one meter it's not actually one whole meter it was actually one tenth of a meter you can see there from the scaling so I can I can put that up and in the you can still increase the angle if you want to um, it's one way of doing it and then increase the screw or you can say right well I set that screw to one and then I'll set this to 3600 and whoops and then yeah now we've not made a few normal steps in the viewport. Um, but it's a tiny bit messy doing it that way. What they've done is what Blender, what the people at Blender have done, which I far prefer. Let's go back to the front view again. Let's go to Z4. Go to edit mode and let's move this up. Let's go. Well, let's just do it the, the, the proper way to do it, which is uh, GZ.05 uh, because it's much one tenth of a meter, Gary, not a meter. Um, and then we can. And yep, that's fine. It's in the right spot. It's just look. Uh, what we can do is we can say right set the screw to point one, so it does it exactly on top of the other one, as you can see. And then we can say right. And now, I want how many of those? Well, let's just increase the number of iterations. So much easier, and it looks so much nicer. And it does mean that your steps are per version rather than per angle. So every single iteration, every single version has got the same number all the way up, which is cleaner because you're not trying to, sometimes if you just get the, you're going for the right height, so you've got the right height of what you need, you don't have to try and think, oh, well, I need that that number of the angle divided by 360 multiplied by uh, uh, so many steps in order to get the amount of actual vertices which I need so they all match up all the way up. Uh, yeah, no, you don't have to do that. So that's really useful for things like springs. In fact, if I just take this a little bit higher. So what you can do with all these iterations on top of each other is you can actually animate the screw itself. So if I was to go here, let's just go here and frame one. In fact, let's just make this a much smaller value just for the sake of argument. Otherwise, I'll be here forever. Let's just set that to 50. Okay. And let's zoom into here. There we go. There we go. Lovely. And I'm going to set let's just reduce the amount of iterations to 12 and I'm going to put a key I'm going to set the screw to 0.1 and I'm going to put a keyframe on that I'm going to go to the end frame and I'm going to insert a keyframe there as well and then I'm going to set that I'm going to set the keyframe there Point to replace keyframe. So yeah, you see we're actually able to keep the volume of the metal and create an animating spring. That is so useful, um, and it saves a lot of faffing. And you can use you can use if you if you have it as part of say the cylinder head of an engine where you're going to need a small spring in one of the cylinder valves. You can actually rig it so that actually the scale itself, the scale of the screw height, moves in relation to other elements. So you can use mathematics to make sure that your spring always top of the top stays in the right place and so on. It's all very useful. I like that. Um, so let's just remove, let's just clear the keyframes and set that back to point point one five. And obviously that was perfect for a spring. If I set that back to the, where the iterations are, teeny tiny. I write on top of each other and I go back into edit mode. Let's go to the front view here. And I am going to select some edges. Let's just go uh, Z4. Not a car. It might be a car. I'm not very good with cars, I'll be honest with you. At least knowing what models are, I always seem to get them wrong. So let's just delete those edges. And so that's actually removed all the inner bits. You can see those have all gone. If I go Z6, there you go, they're all gone. Back to Z4 back to your front view. Let's now go into vertex mode. And I'm going to pick those vertices. I'm going to press delete and I'm going to dissolve those vertices. And I'm going to select these ones here. I'm going to delete and I'm going to dissolve those vertices. And you might notice what we've got now is essentially a screw thread. 
So you actually you do, can use screw to generate a screw. Um, once you've got what you want, of course, you can you know increase the iterations on the steps and whatnot. Um, so 40, something like that. More than enough, I would have thought, really. And then you can apply it, and then you can finish it off by putting stuff on the top and the bottom. All very useful. And then, of course, you can also use merge, uh, which means that all the all the vertices which are on top of each other will actually merge to sing single points rather than being uh, two separate lines together. And, of course, there you can also set a threshold. Um, all very useful. All very, very useful. We like that. We like that a lot. Um, so that's, yeah, that's that's the screw thing. That's great. Now, what I want to talk about the normals here, obviously the smooth shading. Everybody wants that. Everyone wants their faces to be output smooth rather than flat shaded. In fact, let me just do a smooth shade on this. Let's try and do that again. Smooth shade. There you go. Uh, so that will actually smooth, if I just turn off the wireframe, that smooths it as, as well as it can do between the points. And then I'm going to go into normals and turn an auto smooth. And there you've got a very, very nice clean screw thread. As for the calculate order, um, that basically helps you avoid problems with normal and sh normals and shading. So it's a good idea if you're using a mesh to flag that up. It'll make it nice and clean. You don't need it for a curve. So if you've built it, if you've drawn a curve and you use the revolve on that to make a solid shape, um, that's about it. And the other one, of course, is flip normals, which unless you, in fact, let me just do this. If I go in here and I put on face orientation, everything's blue. I press flip and everything's red. So you can see it just basically flips the normals. And occasionally that's not a bad thing when you've got it, when you made a mistake. Because we all do it. Um, and, and I've got to say, um, you know, it's, Honestly, I think it's a very, very good little tool. Listen, please leave a message, leave a note, um, make a comment, contact me via here, put a comment here, put a comment on my website, gemvfx.com. And if there's anything that you'd like to uh, know about or learn about or have an idea that I could do, please let me know. I'm, I'm very easygoing. If someone sends me a fantastic idea, I will do it to the best of my endeavour just to say, hey, yeah, you could do that, do that, do that, yeah, and I will. Um, listen, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. And uh, I hope you have uh, a good one, and I will speak to you soon. Take care of yourselves, guys. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way. Bye.